It's At The Controls time, folks. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to At The Controls, the Twit video game show. I'm your host, Glenn Rubenstein, and with me today, as always, we have Tom Merritt. How's it going, Tom? I'm doing well, Glenn. Brian Brushwood. What's up, Brian? (laughs) Huzzah! It's good to be here. And, of course, behind the desk manning the boards, we have our own Alex Gumpel. Now, today, we have a special guest, Jason French. He's the Franchise Development Director of NCAA Football at EA Sports. He'll be joining us in a few minutes. But first, let's go to the news. To the news. This week... The Call of Duty Elite Beta, out now. Call of Duty fans who are curious about Activision's new Elite service can now sign up for the open beta at callofduty.com. The service will officially launch when Modern Warfare 3 ships this fall, but in the meantime, beta testers can play Call of Duty Black Ops using the service to get a taste of the enhanced stat tracking, matchmaking, and analysis that Elite will offer. However, the beta is currently only available on the Xbox 360 with the PS3 to follow. PopGap Games has been acquired by EA. The company posted an open letter, uh, but, you know, having a little fun with the matter. And since Jason works for EA, Jason, I, I, I want to bring you into this news thing real quick, if I sure. can. And uh, I want you to confirm or deny the following rumors about changes uh, now that PopCap is owned by EA. We're going to get an we're going to get EA rebranded to Poptronic Arts. Uh, deny. Okay. Uh, number two, SimZuma, the Swamp Life Edition. Yes. Deny. Uh, okay. Uh, Pagel Dead Space, Bjorn's Breakfast. <laughs> Deny. Uh, Bejeweled Battlefield Blitz. Deny. Uh, all right. And our last one, Plants vs. Zombie EAZ, NFL Lockout <laughs> Edition. <laughs> uh, Deny. All right. Uh, yeah, so sorry. Maybe our sources aren't as good as we thought. Yeah. Ooh. Well, guess what, though? Despite or possibly because of the bizarrely horrible reviews for Duke Nukem, sold uh, 376,000 copies in June, making it the number two selling game right behind L.A. Noir. And if you think about it, when you take pre-orders for an entire decade, you're bound to do well, even if your game does suck. But... Duke did not help the video game industry overall. According to the NPD group, the smart folks that track these things, total video game hardware and software sales fell 10% to $995 million compared to June of 2010. Software sales fell steepest, 12%, to $469.5 million. The Xbox 360 was the top console with about half a million units moved. The Nintendo DS family did all right with 386,000 units moved. And Sony wouldn't admit their numbers. They must have been bad. That's all we can assume, right? If they're not admitting. According to Senior Director Tony Ellison of Nintendo, Nintendo Video will arrive sometime later this summer for North America, offering free short-form video content for download on the 3DS. In the meantime, 3DS owners can now download the Netflix app for their system, just in time to complain about the new Netflix service. But while Netflix interfaces in 3D, stream Netflix content is only in 2D. However, rumor has it, Netflix will offer premium 3D streaming in the future. We're keeping our eyes crossed on this one. (laughs) Speaking of Netflix, Nintendo this week announced that 1.5 million Wii users are streaming Netflix content on a daily basis. So in other words, it's nice to know that a lack of quality games doesn't necessarily mean that all those Wiis are collecting dust. Just kidding, Nintendo. Not really. We can. We sports is ours. Because we love. The new PlayStation 3 model requires HDMI for HD Blu-ray playback, but not HD gaming. If you're already a PlayStation 3 owner, nothing's going to change for you and you can completely ignore this story. You can continue to watch Blu-ray discs in HD using component cables, but if your device was sold after December 31st of 2010, your device will be limiting the analog video output of Blu-ray content to interlace standard definition. Boo. Unless, of course, you pony up for an HDMI cable, which is strangely no longer included with the system. Now, this shouldn't be a huge deal, but we here at At The Controls think this is a further sign of a Best Buy GameStop conspiracy to try and sell us add-ons at a higher profit margin. And finally, the Tokyo Game Show is giving away 200 tickets to attend this year's show. Good luck figuring out the rules. They're freaking complicated, and we don't even have an easy way to link to them, so just pay your way in. (laughs) <laughs> when well, all else fails. It's the weird part. Like, if you're going to fly all the way to Tokyo, you're just going to balk. I mean, how much How much could they possibly be charging? I know, seriously. Like, after you've birthday. paid the $1,000 for the plane ticket and the hotel. $200 Just to get scam in. your way in. <laughs> Brian can tell you how this. to do it. Yeah. I'm getting out of here. All right, let's get on to our interview. We have a special guest this week, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Jason French, the Franchise Development Director for NCAA Football at EA Sports. How's it going, Jason? 
Very good. Thank you for having me on. No, and part of the reason we're having you on is because this Tuesday, NCAA Football 2012 shipped for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. I've been playing it most of the week. Who do you play as? You know, I have to admit, I started playing as Notre Dame because Rudy is one of my favorite movies of all time. And that's just for me. And you're a very good Catholic. Yeah, well, clearly. With a last name like Rubenstein, I think that's (laughs) obvious. Uh, But I always fall victim to when I'm scrolling through and I see the top rankings, especially in online play, when I'm going up against someone playing as like the number five team. That had me start switching it to playing as Stanford just because they're the number three ranked. And I like having a little (laughs) bit of an edge. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I guess to start with, Jason... Just can you talk a little bit for people that don't quite understand the difference? What do you think are the key differences between NCAA college football and the Madden franchise? Well, um, for the most part, it is the you know college versus the NFL, but and we do we do have a centralized um, uh, gameplay team that does the gameplay for both, but we tweak it in different ways so that it feels different. Um, but for NCAA football, we really focus on uh, the hardcore dynasty features and the road to glory feature that we have. Um, I think uh, with dynasty, our online dynasty feature um, probably kicks Madden's online franchise feature just it kicks its ass <laughs> basically but um not to think they, and, and, and that's one thing that's a, kind of a rivalry between the two teams as well so we always as the kind of younger brother to madden we always have to kind of you know talk a big game because they're going to get extra spending on marketing and stuff yeah they madden get all the free out. publicity they get all yeah. the money but those guys don't know how to make a game yeah when it comes to the hardcore we we see that the hardcore game of football sim gamer comes to ncaa football well and now correct me if i'm wrong so the franchise started with bill white college football back but when bill was wash. It? bill wash bill pardon wash. me bill white was the <laughs> director of marketing at nintendo back in the 90s he wasn't so <laughs> good with the confused. college football. not so much no, no, bill wash college football uh that was what like 94 when that came out in 93 uh, 93 i think yeah for the sega genesis uh, right uh, man and it's funny i'd forgotten that the franchise morphed into that into just straight up ncaa yeah it wasn't an annual title back then mm-hmm. and then um eventually it became uh I don't remember what the title was before it finally became NCAA. I think 98 was the first year that it was NCAA football 98. Gotcha. Now, how does the development differ on NCAA from, say, Madden? I mean, in terms of the development cycle and the process. Yeah, so we ship about six weeks before Madden, and um, that's just so that, you know, we don't want to ha- put out two football games back to back so that, you know, NCAA has a little bit more time before Madden comes out. And um, so it's it's very similar. We do a, it's a full year cycle, and we build on the same engine year after year. Um, but usually, like right now, uh, even though it just shipped, we're getting ready and figuring out what we're going to do for the next year. So. Now, it, does it use the same engine that each year's Madden uses? I know there were some years where you were almost getting a preview of what the new Madden engine would be if you bought the NCAA title. Well, think- it's a it's a branch from the same engine. Gotcha. So it's, it is a separate. So the, everything that makes it uniquely NCAA is separate. So how is the annual development cycle on a game like this compared to a traditional game because in this case you're obviously you're refreshing the title each year you're making constant improvements and overhauls to to the game itself how does this vary compared to working on you know well let's say like you know the 14 year development cycle of duke nukem forever or right. uh, the seven year <laughs> development cycle of la noir uh but right. i mean just let's say it's even compared to a game that goes on a three or four year cycle i mean right how's the development and I, and I have worked on one i worked on a first person shooter a couple years ago called section eight and it was a two-year development cycle mm-hmm. and really that part where you're having to kind of build the engine, that technology in order to make the game, is already in place for us. I mean, not to say that we don't improve the engine. The first, the first few months of development is really getting the tech in place so that we can build those features on top of that new tech. So, for example, this year we did new HDR lighting. So uh, the first few months of development last or for 12 was to get that technology in place and then have to go to each stadium and, and light it. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, one thing that I thought was interesting... Uh, looking at some of uh, your posts online and whatnot. So this game, the NCAA 2012 that just hit stores this week, you hit alpha for the game in March and then beta in May of this year? 
Yeah, that's correct. So we uh, go alpha. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're feature complete in March. And th that's pretty di well, I mean, we're still making changes to the schools right up till we go to first party. So there's there's about six to eight weeks that it takes to submit to first party, get certified and then get packaged and then into store. So we have to get those rosters and data done pretty early. Gotcha, gotcha. And so what are the key features, the key, uh, you know, high points that are new to this year's title? So uh, the big change that I'm all excited about is that we have a new coaching carousel in Online Dynasty. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, play with my buddies, uh, all from University of Texas. I see we're seeing Texas right now, so that's good. Welcome. Vivo <laughs> is looking awesome right there. Okay. Uh, but the coaching carousel is basically, um, in the past, you've just been kind of a, a coach uh, on the team, but you really had no consequences with your decisions or no reward. Like you couldn't move up to a, to a better school. So uh, this year, you can start as an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator on a team at a one-star school and then make your way up every, year after year. So there's like a mode at the in the offseason per in the years where you kind of get job offers and can move from team to team. Now, can you have shady practices dealing with team boosters, <laughs> making donations to prospective players? Giving Broncos yeah, yeah. out. And uh, none of that. None of the politics no. are involved, which no. is unfortunate because I think that's the most interesting part about being a college football coach is right. sort of these underhanded dealings that go on. <laughs> I know you must get that yeah. joke all the time. That must be like we an do. internal meme. Well, it, you know, obviously the NCAA licensing board would not like us to do anything. I'm sure they would dis discourage that yeah. by being encouraged. Yeah. Um, one thing that I thought was really interesting about the game was the new high school mode in terms of the uh, what is it called the road to glory yeah road to glory so in road to glory you're a, you're a player and so um, in the past we've always had the high school playoffs but we blew yeah. it out this year so that you play the entire uh, high school uh, last year of your high school season and um, you can actually import if you go to team builder which is our teambuilder.easports.com you can actually there's already people who have created nearly every high school in the country and you can actually import those into your schedule and almost recreate your entire high school career if, if you ever played in high school which i did not no but. i thought it was insane just the way that when you're making your player i mean in california you have almost every city in there i was able to make myself as a star quarterback from petaluma california although i had to make it petaluma high school i cannot make it the actual Ca casa grande where i actually went but i was able to get the colors in there i will say that my one uh gripe though about high school mode is the way you have it set up it's you're almost doing challenges of specific plays depending on which role you're playing that's right i, I yeah, almost would have preferred to just play the straight ahead game in, in high school mode and sort of b gain experience that way i mean that's yeah. just personal preference but i thought it was very interesting and deep mode just because of the complexity allowed for customizing your character yeah that's really kind of our rpg mode as yeah. a player um, we kind of try to have the coach where you're playing the whole team in, in online dynasty mode or in dynasty mode and then road to glory being that single player. So if you play as the wide receiver, you're basically running the route and catching the ball each play. Yeah. And you have to do practice and then you get points. And what we added for road to glory also is kind of a coach trust um, where you earn like you may start as the third string quarterback and then have to earn through practice, earn your way up to the, the starter and then the captain of the team so that then you can do more stuff like call audibles and things like that. And that's the thing. I mean, the depth of it, we were talking about this in the last week's show. The reason why I always recommend the NCAA football games is I actually think it's a much deeper game than Madden when you get into all the different modes, the ways of playing it, and just the sheer amount of teams. I mean, what are the amount of total schools that you have in the game? Yeah, we have 120 schools in the game. Take so, that, NFL. Yeah. Well, it also just becomes a logistical nightmare, too, with having to keep track with 120 stadiums. Well, actually, it's like 140 or 50 stadiums because you have all the, the bowl stadiums and all the championship stadiums. So it just becomes, yeah, just keeping track and, and our – Hardcore fans are always pointing out little graphical issues that we're always coming up with. Oh, this logo isn't quite right. I was on a very long email about how we didn't get the, the Pac-12 logo <laughs> quite right today. So. I'm impressed by this by this glory mode. I mean, I, I looked up Greenville, Illinois, Yeah, obviously, this first thing I did. And there are 12 Greenville Comets uh, <laughs> files available. Yeah. A town of 7,000 people. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and in I fact, went to high school in even Lindale, a... Texas, and yeah, I mean, like, 
town of 3,000 people, and yep, there's like two or three in there. There's even the Greenville Junior Comets somebody has created. Yeah, I, I downloaded a user-created team someone actually made for the San Francisco Demons, the old XFL franchise, nice. and played for that for a while <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Uh, but speaking of nitpicks, uh, one uh, Mitchell Miller wrote in, and he wanted to know why his favorite college athletic program, uh, the UAB uh, Blazers, had their stadium Legion Field, I guess, removed from NCAA 12. It's a generic stadium, but it's it's been renamed UAB Stadium, but I guess it's announced as Legion Field. Do you know anything specifically about this? I don't I don't know anything specifically about that, but um, sometimes we either don't have the rights to certain stadiums, oh. so we have to either genericize them or we're asked by the school to take them out. So we have to submit uh, screenshots to pretty much every college. The CLC review board helps us with that process, but we submit things and they either, you know, tell us to take it out and stuff like that. Well, and uh, you, you, of, you don't have the same relationship with player names either that, that the, the yeah. NFL will have either. Yeah, no, we don't have to do. I, I did work on Madden, and Madden through the NFL Players Association gets all the player names, but then not every player is in the NFL Players Association, so you have to take them out. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, we also got another question sent in to us uh, from Nick Jones. Wants to know, how hard was it to implement the new camera system and lighting in this year's game? The lighting turned out to be very difficult in the sense of it took a lot of tuning near the end. Um, there were a lot of bugs that we had to take uh, care of, and uh, the lighting, the way we implemented it was it was per camera. So for each camera, we had to go in and make sure the lighting was correct in each in each area. So um, I think we're going to come up with a better way to do that for next year. But you know, sometimes when you when you get to near the end of the cycle, you just have to kind of deal with what you had and and get it done, and then work on it next year now do you feel that this year because of the impending nfl player lockout do you think that there's maybe going to be a little more attention on ncaa football yeah that's what we were hoping for this year is because um madden you know with the lockout we have seen in past with like the nhl lockout and how well nhl ea sports nhl did uh that year that uh we we were worried that or we are worried still that madden you know might not sell as well uh because of the lockout although it sounds like they're close to maybe resolving it i i don't know yeah who knows it's up in the air yeah. at, at any point uh now here's just a personal question i've noticed because i've been playing these games again since you know the days of, of bill walsh and the early days of madden um and i used to really when i wrote for sports illustrated for kids i had to get so hardcore about every <laughs> sports game and it, it was literally spending my entire summer was spent between the ncaa game and then back God, I guess in the early 2000s between comparing Madden and uh, Sega's you know, 2K Sports franchise. But one thing that I'm curious about is why must the kicking interface change constantly in these games? <laughs> why That's can't true. we just Actually, stick with one? Well, for NCAA, we have uh -huh. stuck with the same kicking interface for at least four or five years. Uh -huh. But I will say that Madden is the one that usually changes it year after year. But it's but, like just when I get used to a tri-click or something like that, right. you know, it's, it seems like every time there's just some yeah. tweaking with it. I like the current one, but yeah. it definitely is one of those things where there, there is no universal standard, it seems. Right. It's funny, just between Madden and NCAA, we have two different ways of doing it, right? So we have the R-Stick one that that I like, personally like, and then uh, Madden has the, the triple click, and yeah, it's personal preference, but I like the R-Stick. <laughs> now, what's the uh, someone in the uh, chat realm want to know, uh, Kenny D wants to know, what's the primary development target given that it's on multiple platforms? Um, we try to treat them exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, we are developing. A, we basically distribute our con our development systems to um, kind of some people are working on Xbox, some people are working on PS3 because we don't really want to focus on one or the other. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, and this is the first year. I think you mentioned it earlier on uh, on Google Plus when some people were talking about it. This is the first year the NCAA isn't coming out on the PS2, right? That's right. Yeah, this is the first year that we decided, you know, it, like, well, last year we did it, but we didn't really have that much of an investment in it. I don't think we changed it all that much. But gotcha. as long as it was still selling, you know, it was like, you know, why not invest a little bit uh, if people are still going to buy it? But I think, I don't know what it ended up being last year, but obviously it wasn't enough to bring it back this year. Although Madden is coming out with PS2 this year. And that was another thing people had asked on, on Google Plus. They had some questions for you in terms of, you know, what about the Wii and PC? And I thought your yeah. answer were kind of interesting if you just sort of recap sort of the your take on the Wii platform for uh for uh EA sports games then PC possibilities yeah uh we did um the last NCAA that was on the Wii was 09 and it was just uh again it is it was hard to capture that Wii um 
customer. Um, it, it, it turns out it, it just looks like uh, people who have a Wii just don't buy that annual sports game, right? Mm-hmm. They just want to get one or two, and, and then it, that's good enough for now. And um, and then also, I don't really think we were taking full advantage of that, you know, the Wii remote control. So, I, I don't know. We always are trying different things. Uh, we tried, I think, a five-on-five mode for Madden, and uh, which we also did uh, an NFL arcade game as well to just try and try to see if there's different people out out there besides that hardcore gamer who wants that football sim. Yeah. And we thought that customer was on the Wii, but you know, maybe it isn't. <laughs> and as far as the PC, I know you mentioned yeah. on Google Plus that you were noticing a trend recently that more AAA titles are being done for the PC. Right. I mean, do you think that there's a chance EA could come back to doing more EA Sports titles on the PC? I mean, it's always a possibility. I, I did work on the PC for Madden, so I worked on Madden PC, uh, PC 2002 through four, and um, so I always loved the PC, honestly. And you know, and you, you just never know. You do start seeing the call. Is Call of Duty coming out on? Well, I'm sorry, Battlefield Three maybe coming out on PC. Yeah, yeah, and, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it 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 does. The, the football game does kind of lend itself to the console experience, and I know it was kind of tough to capture that, that market on the PC, but there was always – I always get that question about the PC. Is it coming back on the PC? So there's, there's obviously people out there who want it on the PC. How hard is it as a developer to, to switch gears and add PC back into a, a, yeah. a workflow like that? Yeah, it was – so one thing we did with the PC, uh, when we did Madden PC uh, 2002, it was actually a hybrid port of uh, Madden PC 2001 and the PS2 version of uh, of Madden 2001. And so uh, we just kind of slapped those interfaces together. When we went to Madden 2003, we decided to do it correctly, but we had to do a whole new interface. We didn't think that – the PC user would want a big blocky 640 by 480 interface with giant icons for their PC experience. So we wanted to kind of redo the interface so it was more PC. Um, that's really the diff- most difficult part is the user interface. And uh, yeah, what was the last year that, that Madden came out on the PC? I think it was 06. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. So it's been it's been gone for quite a while. And uh, so what are your thoughts, I mean, as far as future console, what, what do you think about the Wii U? Um, yeah, the Wii U, uh, we haven't really announced anything for the Wii U yet, but, um, I mean, our strategy at EA Sports is to be on it, on as many platforms as possible. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised, so. Gotcha. I mean, and pr- what did you think just after checking it out at E3? I, yeah, I thought it was interesting. It, it, <sighs> The most obvious thing people have, you know, I've seen everywhere is like, oh, you can call plays on it. Yeah, yeah, it would seem like with sports games especially. Yeah, but it just seems like you want more than just to call call your plays on it. In terms of, yeah, so. greater interaction, maybe even like with yeah. passing or stuff like that. Actually, that would be interesting with augmented yeah, was, reality. Yeah, wasn't there, yeah, when there, one of the games they showed where they were holding the screen, holding it up to the screen or something yeah. and then the pass or something was coming in yeah so something like that would be would definitely be cool but you're not ready to make any news today as far as no. announcements although i know I, uh, ea did confirm at e3 correct me if i'm wrong they did confirm they will be developing for the wii u but obviously no titles have been announced yeah no titles i don't think have been announced yet gotcha gotcha and uh let's see then what's the other thing i want to mention and i didn't even know about this till yesterday when i checked it out but there's an espn u show that chronicles the development of ncaa 2012 that's correct. The first episode was yesterday, and it's on ESPNU. It was at 7 o'clock. It's four episodes. So while we were finaling, uh, it was already stressful enough to, to, to final the game. We had a camera crew following us around about half the time. So trying to capture the the uh, the very yeah, the moments, you know, just the stress around it. And so um, uh, it's on Thursdays. So for the next three Thursdays, uh, check it out. It's on ESPNU. Are you starring? I am more in this next episode. Yeah, okay. I saw you so, a little bit in the first one. Yeah, I was a little bit in the first episode. I'm more in the second episode where I talk about finaling. There's also a really uh, kind of cute scene where um, I call my kids to wish them a good night over Skype. <laughs> 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 awesome. Awesome. And yeah, I mean, I thought it was really interesting just because you haven't really seen a lot of reality TV around the game development process. So I was definitely very interested in the first episode I was watching. It was just kind of cool to see 
by, you know, people always ask I me, mean, we get a lot of questions on the show in terms about development, how things are done. I think it was just very eye opening, especially given that sports titles are so unique in their yearly refresh that it's perhaps not, you know, we hear these horror stories about other games being in constant crunch mode. I mean, do you find at this point having it down to an annual development cycle where there's kind of a steady pacing throughout the year, or do you find that you hit huge crunches still? We don't have huge crunches. Uh-huh. Um, we did have a huge crunch. So I, one of the games that I made was uh, I was on Madden 06, the launch title for the Xbox 360, and we yeah. did crunch for that. Um, that was a two-year cycle, and we were changing a lot of technology, and there was one demo after another, even before we had the final hardware, uh, that we had to crunch a lot. But now that we're in this annual cycle, we have it down to about uh, seven to eight weeks where we're working long hours. And it's never as long as it has been in the past. I, f- I feel like that's because we do it so often, we're getting better at it every year. And so um, we, we, we track it pretty closely how many hours we work during that time. And, you know, we did do better this year. I think we can do better even next year. So it's just a matter of those kind of bad decisions we make during the year that kind of pile up into the finaling part and you know in the end you have to just ship the game well and to tease one of the upcoming episodes on the espn you show there is an episode that deals with the how the psn downtime affected the development that's correct so horrible timing for psn to go down and it didn't just go down for the customers it actually went down for everybody so we did not have psn as well and so there was a it was during may right so that was yeah. the time when we were trying to finish and um we couldn't test our online Ugh. mode <laughs> for right at the end in fact uh we had to get peter moore's permission to submit to sony um having not tested well at one point remember everything but the store came up so we were pretty mm. confident that we would be okay but we hadn't tested that oh will the dlc actually download yeah pretty confident is not the same as it worked yeah that's right a, exactly yeah we difference. want we want our qa department to say check yeah, yeah. and uh they couldn't do that and so uh, we had to email Peter Moore, and, and he had to give his blessing. But we were pretty confident it worked, and it actually went fine. Making of NCAA Football 12, it's a four-part series, uh, so look for it on ESPNU. It's, uh, it started yesterday, like you said, at, at 7 yeah. p.m. But they, you know how these cable channels, they rerun stuff, so you should be Constantly. able to catch it. It will be rerun, I've heard, a lot. I so. added it as a season pass on, on my DVR. And then I guess uh, lastly, on the topic of NCAA, I know you said you're just starting the development now for next year's title. I mean, is there anything you can sort of tease or wish list for next year? Year's game? <laughs> not really. Not that I can think. Well, yeah. it's very early in deciding what we're doing for that. I mean, uh, it's it's interesting how much it's changed from when I was making games just like five years ago uh, when I did uh, I did Madden 2005 for the PS2. And when we were done and shipped off the first party, we were done. And now we mm-hmm. have to get websites ready. We have to get servers ready. We had to make sure that um, I think our PSU was around uh, 40,000. Wow her platform that we needed to make sure we tested to make sure the servers wouldn't crater if that many people got on it and uh Fortunately, it's been very smooth this year. Last year wasn't so smooth, but this year has been very smooth. So the PS2 version, was that the 15th anniversary edition, Madden? It was. Very good. I am in that game, the special oh. edition. There's an episode <laughs> yes. of Icons uh, on the Madden oh, franchise. Really? Yeah, That's that cool. I was so one of the talking heads. I, I wrote the code that allowed it to be a dual-layer PS2 Ooh. Uh, game. In fact, it's right up here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. No, that was uh, crazy. That was that was my ambition when I got into this industry in 1990 was to be in a video game, and I was like, that's close enough. You know, <laughs> that works for me. That's that's almost better than mocap because it's FMV. Uh, cool, man. And then I guess lastly to go out on here is transition. So what what else are you playing lately? I am currently playing uh, L.A. Noir. Oh, and what, I picked it up yeah, what, just the other day. What do you think of it? Um, I like it so far. I, I was amazed. At the uh, lip sync, uh, the, the, the expression on the faces is just amazing. So, I, I mean, I can say, like, as a developer, I was looking at that and trying to figure out, how are they doing that? 16 so, cameras, isn't that what yeah. it is in the motion, mo- the mocap heard, they're doing? I heard it was even more than that. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just for the face, I, I've, I don't know, we, it's interesting. We'll have to see see how they do it. Of course, I, I, I Googled, you know, how did they do this? And all I got was their big crunch time and all that stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Nightmare stories. I think, I think yeah. every game developer that, that read the development stories of L.A. Noir just is glad that, you know, their workplace probably isn't as bad. 
Right. You know, comparatively. Although they're in Australia, which some would argue is, is a bit of a plus. Uh, anything else you've been checking out lately? Um, I just finished Portal 2. Cool, cool. Best. I mean, one of the, I, the story there, I mean, it's just awesome. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Kudos, kudos to Valve. I mean, that, uh, I don't want to give away to anyone who hasn't played it, but the ending is just awesome. What platform did you play it on? Uh, Xbox 360. Cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, thanks for joining us today, Jason. It's been yeah, great it's been having you. You're our second guest ever, and we'll definitely have you back once we're in the new studio, and we can uh, talk more, hopefully, as things get up and running with NCAA 2013. Just think, yeah. it's only a year away from launch. It's Ooh. only a year away. Lucky 2013. Got to get started. Cool. Yeah. But um, I was glad that I got to appear in the old studio before. Yes. That's right. We're on our last show in the old studio. Yeah. Great having you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining right. us today. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, moving on to what we're playing. Or well, I guess actually, an we, ad. what we need to do move on to is to an ad, Brian. Dude, you know what? <laughs> I have problem, and I need solution. Any suggestions? Well, we've got our sponsor, whom we believe in, so we've allowed them to be on the show, who does this that solves your problem. Oh, I love sponsor, and their solution is so benefit. Yeah, and let me tell you, I use sponsor. So this isn't just me saying it because they're paying us. I actually do this with Sponsor, and therefore, I can personally recommend Sponsor. Uh, you know what? I'd like to postulate an innovative use for Sponsor, something that you might try that you might not think of right off, off the bat. And if anyone the in the chat realm has any innovative uses for Sponsor, by all means. Yeah. Now, <laughs> once I sign up for a Sponsor, what should I use when I sign in? Maybe well, promo code? Uh, yeah, actually, if you're going to try out Sponsor, there's a trial mode for Sponsor, and you should use the offer code, special code. <laughs> Special code seven because it's July. <laughs> code seven. You guys are so committed to this bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it will hey, never get pulled to us. And we're we thank sponsor for our their have, support even we, of Apple Control. We have sponsor. We're still going to put like a third ad read in. <laughs> where we just same bit. <laughs> All right, let's move on to what we're playing. What we're playing. So I've been playing NCAA yes, 2012, which we just talked about. And okay, feel, Jason's gone. What do you yeah. really no, think? No, I really like it. I really like it uh, quite a bit. And I like the depth of it. Like I said, the high school mode. I wish they had where you could just play a complete high school season, like full full games, every position coaching. Because I really enjoy just well, the that's the amazing thing Drilling about down. this crowdsourcing of creating teams yeah because before the idea of creating a video game where you play high school seasons mm -hmm. it's like don how would you ever do that there's so many high school teams but with this they could actually go through and like crowdsource it pick yeah. the best teams and say okay you know what upload our your ea you know approved teams and and actually play i would high just school seasons. blown away the amount of cities that they had in every state you know, I mean, even having Petaluma in California, I mean, we're not. Well, when we're not you a said huge... Petaluma, I was like, yeah, but I bet they don't have Greenville. I mean, freaking yeah, 12 dude. Greenvilles. That was crazy. And Petaluma is not real. I mean, you see Santa Rosa listed in a lot of stuff. You don't see Petaluma listed in most things. I mean, that's drilling. What about it down. Sebastopol? Was, was, I, you know, I didn't check. check. I didn't yeah, check for I, Sebastopol. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if they'd had the high school names, that would have been great. But I understand that's way more. I mean, imagine the, the amount of effort and energy that would have to go into that. But I thought it was really awesome, just the amount of detail. And uh, I, I love stuff like that. I'm a sucker for just being able to drill down right. to the I'm, I'm going to look one up. If they have this, okay. I will be truly... Go ahead, Brian. You, you well, talk. I, I was going to say, I, I understand that it will be a tremendous amount of work, but this is clearly what you guys are most excited about. I'm going to think if you just have to hire one more intern, pay him pay him 50 grand, and he spends his whole year doing nothing but completing the puzzle, this is the equivalent of those keychains with your names on them, you know, where it's like you just have this irrational ah. affinity for it. Same way I feel about Google+. Plus. Smartest thing they did was put my name up in the corner and not the word Google+. Plus no on mobile Mulberry okay. Grove, Illinois. Oh, man. Of course, they don't have a football team. <laughs> but I would think somebody would have just created one. Jeez, but just, okay. I guess the point being, by, like, if they could just pay one guy to, to fill in even more of those, yeah, I, I, I got to think that's the difference between you kind of liking a game and feeling like a deep bond to it. And let me yeah, say this, because, Brian, I know you were a little quiet during our uh, NCAA football yeah, I, segment. For there. the record, <laughs> this is like a perfect storm of things Brian is least interested in. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, it, I, you know, keep in mind, I like that uh, I'm platform agnostic, but it's very clear I'm more hardcore on the PC than on console. Uh, if I'm an, in a room and everyone else likes football, I, you know, I guess I could be bullied into watching it, especially college football. And so it's like, in, in sports video games are my least type favorite type of video game. And you have so that, that weird prejudice against people with the last name French. I don't understand. Yeah, well, and plus also beards. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh, <laughs> hey, another guy with a beard on this show. Well, 
great. Let me say this, Brian. I mean, for me, I don't play a sport. I think people can tell that from looking at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you could be a rugby player. Yeah, I'll, totally. I'll buy it. Totally, dude. Um, uh, you know, I don't watch a lot of sports. I actually, normally that's something I tune out during a sports conversation. But the reason why NCAA football gets me is because that level of depth and detail. Because that's something that I'm such a nerd for. Anytime when people are able to up the level of... of De, uh, detail in terms of being able to drill down and just do all these different variations that's something yeah. that always interests me you know? I guess maybe that's to me that's what's most daunting about a game like that like a game like that I will definitely pick up and play with my buddies you know if we all happen to be in the same room together but you know being a dad I don't find that happens nearly as often as it did a decade ago uh, and so I don't know something like that just looks like a very big project and even though it might be a very sort of like somebody handing you a very rich detailed novel that that it talks about what a great drill down experience there is in it and it's like they're like too much I don't even want to get started on it you know and I think I got an appreciation for it, especially when I was doing the Sports Illustrated for kids stuff because before that I was always like sports games are too hardcore for me to really get into but then mm -hmm. when it was my job to get into it I got a real appreciation for just how much work and effort goes into translating that end user experience well you get over that hump of like ah, I, don't know, yeah. I don't know if I'm that interested because you have to and yeah. then you start to see hey gameplay mechanics are gameplay mechanics and there's some really interesting stuff and going my on. my favorite teams usually end up being the ones that I enjoy playing a whole hell of a lot sure. in the game. I mean, I became a huge uh, Packers fan just because that was my go-to team in, in 2K football, you know, and in, and in Madden. And it turned out that's why I still like the Packers. That's funny. You know, although they got rid of that, that, that quarterback. Brett Favre? <laughs> yes. That was like three years ago. That yeah, quarterback. Did that you quarterback. refer to Brett Favre as that quarterback? I was being funny. No, I know, that guy. Brett Favre. That, you know, that one dude. Yeah. Um, I'm tired like six times since then. But aside from NCAA 2012, I uh, was playing L.A. Noir, the Reefer Madness case came out for dlc uh lots of good discussion about drug politics and uh why certain things are illegal are had within there i'm disappointed though that this is the last announced dlc that's come out for la noir and at no point does any dlc case any case within the game let you inside the la speedway and that's all i want that and I want to be able to fly a plane. You can go on an airstrip, but you can't get into a plane. Are they doing any kind of user-created stuff like they're that? They're not, they but Rockstar did tease this week that there will be some. That they're not done with L.A. Noir yet. That okay. there will be okay. more. So there will be something and coming. And people are speculating that when the PC version comes out this fall, that it might be kind of like how Bully did my beloved game Bully, which I think is probably the best game Rockstar's done, at least for something that just appeals to me because I love I love high school films. You love beating up little kids. Well, it's, it's not actually about that. In the game, you're actually being bullied. You get to choose sort of the morality of how you go in it. Um, it just reminds me of a great high school coming of age you know film what? but as a sandbox uh, video game but so they did yeah, scholarship it's, it's edition I actually for think bully, though. might actually yeah. make more money because what uh, if you took the bully dynamic but set it in a prison where you start <laughs> off <laughs> And then you become the biggest badass on the cell block. You know, Rockstar, if you're listening, I, I know Geronimo uh, Barrera, uh, the VP of like creative at Rockstar. I should I should pitch that to him uh, on your behalf. Pris That's money in the bank. Just <laughs> yeah. $1. That's what I tried to Consider it pitch. Yes, $1 to care You have of to Rockstar. decide which, which gang to pledge, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It could be like my, my one of my favorite films, Blood In, Blood Out, Bound by Honor, <laughs> you know, with uh, Vatos uh, Locos. Yeah. Oh, man. That movie's awesome. But uh, no. So anyhow, so for Eleanor, people are speculating how Bully had the scholarship edition that came out with PC with a console re-release that followed that maybe Eleanor will get some fancy schmancy upgrades and additional content on the PC version with uh, some sort of console refresh. So it's a come pause. After. Yeah. That's all. It's, it's a pause. It's not an end. That's good. But I got to say, L.A. Noir, um, second only to Portal 2 in my favorite games that, that I've played this year. Also, I oh, that I'll get to play it this year, that we'll be able yeah. to have a discussion at the end of this yes, year. Yes, finally. It was game of the year. I'll be like, dude, where were you? I was all over this thing back in the spring. Uh, no, but uh, also I was playing Resident Evil Mercenaries on the 3DS, specifically because I wanted to check out the save game controversy. As uh, we discussed a few episodes ago, there was a controversy about can you erase your save game file? Right, can once you, you Start, can you replay you can the only game? Pick up from somewhere in the saved game. You couldn't start all over again. Here's the thing: the save file is locked. However, you can replay the game from the beginning. You can, or, or at any level, you can well, go back from the play. very beginning or from the first save. Um, no, from the very beginning, you from can go very... back and replay any level. But here's, here's and then can you save over your previous? spots no it keeps the high scores and it keeps everything unlocked that you've already unlocked but okay. here's the thing about it though so you're not playing it over fresh resident evil mercenaries to me does not feel very much like a resident evil game because it's a straightforward 
shoot shooter. Right. I mean, it's a first person. Well, not it's a third person shooter technically. But if I buy this thing used, I'm going to get other people's high scores, and yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not going to be able to play it. But no, you can play it from the beginning, or or I'm, from any but, level. But only uh, only as if I'm somebody else playing it over again. Actually, some might argue you're at an advantage because things are already unlocked. You can jump to any level you want from the get-go. That's some fun. might find that as to be uh, That's a uh, bit of a plus. It's a, very, it's a very good way of looking at the other side of the story. But the thing is that you're not screwed in the sense that there's no... It's not unplayable. It's not unplayable. Sure. They said it was a replay. But what I was disappointed with is it doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game. It mm-hmm. feels just like a straightforward third-person shooter where you happen to be shooting zombies. Yeah. It's well done for that, but I it's expect the principle more. of the thing that bothers me. Yeah. What you're saying is, in reality, really yeah, of course, of course. I mean, DRM, and this is again our evergreen control issue that I'm sure we'll right. end up doing on any slow week. We'll just argue about DRM and complain <laughs> about it. But uh, my biggest disappointment with the game wasn't that; it was just that it didn't feel much like a Resident Evil game. You know, not the things that I love about it. I didn't feel scared or surprised or hey, freaked uh, out at any point. Bef- before we move past uh, what get, what Glenn's playing, I do, uh, ex- again, since it'll be months and months till I get a chance to get close to it, on the, the Reefer Madness pack, did did you feel like the writers had a take on the drug war policy, or did they convince you, or was there anything interesting as far as, uh, did you learn anything, I guess is what I'm asking. Not really. Are you going to do drugs? Well, you know, I'm always always just a step away. All it takes is a little peer pressure, as we know, and next thing you know, I'm, I'm on the pot. One day at a time, um, But th- I found there were better drug politic conversations in some of the other Vice cases. In this one, it was actually interesting, the mechanics of how they were smuggling the drugs and getting them out there. I thought that was actually kind of novel, how they were doing it. It was a plot device I hadn't really seen before, so I thought it was cool. Um, overall, though, I, I, I love the game and how they set up uh, a good look back at the morality of the time and it's not too heavy though on the wink wink nudge nudge that which i respect because i think a lot of games that take place in the past yeah do way too much of that sure sure you well, know so like it, that's uh, crazy next thing you know you'll be talking about women having the right to vote ha ha, right. ha. I, and i and i don't you know? like i don't like that kind of stuff because it takes yeah. you out of the game but i do feel like there's an opportunity for the game to tell the story of you know of the times when it was a recent decision to you know uh, you know marijuana specifically was legal you could get marijuana stamps from the government and then mm-hmm. they sort of they they criminalized it in a in a succession of small moves and i would love to much like uh, you watch boardwalk empire and you get a, a real visceral you, you live in that prohibition era for a while you see things differently i was hoping that you would get some of that with the reefer madness and there's a little bit of discussion of it but i think that it's just it's the right amount of of reference with it and i think they do a good job in the game because the main character cole landry has very much the stance of you know he's he's there to enforce the law not to make his own interpretation whereas right. other cops have guess, the belief that you know they'll look the other way yeah. i guess yeah. what i was hoping for was a little bit of the wire in well i, I hope for that yeah. in every video game i hope for that in the wire video game <laughs> I, I fingers crossed one day it'll happen some days that'd be Someday. awesome yeah. yes it would uh moving on tom what are you playing uh tiny tower still <laughs> here's <laughs> what here's what happened i actually got off the crack uh, Eileen and I sat down. We had an intervention. We're like, we cannot play Tiny Tower anymore. This is just, it's taking up too much of our time. You know, we're ignoring the dogs. We're not feeding ourselves. You know, we're not bathing. We really need to stop playing this game. And, uh, and then I upgraded to iOS 5 on ah. my iPad. Thing about that is, if you do it like I did it, and you upgrade iTunes because you need to upgrade iTunes every time you upgrade the the betas. Uh, yeah. If you upgrade iTunes first, iTunes can't sync anymore. You have to sync first before you upgrade iTunes. So I upgraded iTunes it's like, well, I can't sync this iPad because it doesn't have the new iOS five beta three. I'm like ah, whatever. I you know I, <laughs> I I synced it a couple days ago. It's not a big deal. Not thinking that Tiny Tower stores locally. It's ah. not a cloud based game. So Wait, when I, thought, I, I think it is because I mean it nope. kind of is because uh, if if you, if you log do a into fresh game Center, if you do a fresh install it will right. see a saved game on Game Center and it will right. take you from there but it won't keep them in sync. For instance, well, if you play if you play Tiny Tower on an iPhone and an iPad, you're playing two different games. Well, uh, I, I I'm going to tip my hand for what I'm what you're about to find out that I've been playing. Uh, I've been reinstalling Tiny Tower each time because my daughter plays on the iPad. And I play on the iPhone, so I just I just remove it and then I reinstall it on the iPhone so that I can steal her tower. 
Well, here's what happened to me is I, I, I upgraded iOS 5, I upgraded iTunes, it synced, it pulled in uh, the, uh, the game from Sunday, and I lost six levels. Oh my gosh! How many floors are you up to? Uh, well, I'm now up to 34 floors. Uh, but that took me back from like I think I was around 34 or 35 and took me down to 29. So I've almost caught back up. That is uh, sad. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a it's no, a it's cautionary. Sad that we're so far into Tiny Tower. Oh, oh, yeah. That's uh, that's also it's actually a cautionary <laughs> tale. However you look at it. Uh, well, yeah. Kids, I mean, uh, kids, forget reefer madness. <laughs> Don't play Tiny Tower. I'll tell you what, your story of, of saying why you're trying to stop because you're not taking care of the house or whatever, that was for one day when The Sims came out. I played The Sims, and I made a little Brian, and I made a little Bonnie, and I made a little <laughs> house, and they were growing, and they were, you know, he was going to work, he was making money and coming home, and then I bought him a pinball game, and uh, and all he did was was play his pinball game, and I watched his relationship go down, I watched his money go down, I watched his life slowly get ruined because all he wanted to do was play pinball, and then the bitter irony of the fact that I was... <laughs> Playing The Sims, actually ignoring my wife like, and my What work. an idiot. Why is he only playing this game all the time instead of taking like care of his Sim? life? <laughs> How and long have I been playing? The last time I played The Sims. Well, I, I can't. I, I will have to move on then to to you, Brian, because I, I have to find Ernest Perkins, and I'm not sure where he, what floor he lives on. So yeah, just, you just you just go through and click on all of them. You just, like, you just go ahead. I you would know, like to point I, out again, you gave me crap last week for the Degrassi game, and you're obsessed with Tiny. This Tower. is so much better than the. You you haven't tried the Degrassi game. I don't have time. I got to play Tiny <laughs> Tower. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude. It, uh, you, uh, damn your eyes, Merritt. You got me hooked on the tiny tower, and my tower is very tiny. It's only 16 floors now. But what I love about it is that I can play it with my daughter, and it's, uh, it's something that, like, she's into it, and she loves the missions where you find the people. And, uh, uh, you know, I started to explain to her the concept behind it and now like she came back from a from a six hour drive from her grandparents and the first thing she told me she was like i got someone their dream job it was awesome dad and so it's cool it's cool to have something like that to play with the kids um but i have started playing magica have either of you guys played magica no i've not no nope. Uh, I've been hearing about it for a while. I saw it's only nine ninety nine on Steam, so uh, I put it in there. And the inter interface to play is so novel and so much fun. I am instantly loving it. What you do is to cast a spell. You got eight different elements. You got your water, your lightning, your fire, your earth, your uh, your shield, and uh, and cold and hot or whatever, right? And they and but you combine them to do novel things. For example, if you just do fire. You could do like a fire blast in front of you. It's got a range. It's like a cone of fire, right? But if you combine uh, fire with earth, you shoot a fireball that actually goes all the way across. Or you could take, um, let's say you want to break down a, a door. You can just, you know, you can uh, just do one earth earth ball, I guess, you know, uh, throw a rock at it. But Or you could do three of them, combine them, charge it up, and just do this monstrous boulder that you could knock stuff to, on down. And uh, it is so clever and so much fun my only problem with it is it's still even though it's been seven months since its release is still way buggy and it's killing me because the save game system is so frustrating i kid you not i had to play from the beginning of the game five times because each time i would run into a different bug a script would start mm. and then i'd start to get attacked but i couldn't control it and uh when you exit the game there's checkpoints throughout the level, but when you exit the game, you have to go back to the beginning of the level next time you come back in it. But uh, despite all that, as soon as we're done here, in fact, I may actually fire it up and just play and let people watch. It is super funny. It is so – there are so many – tiny buried references to all these these pop culture things that geeks are going to get for example um you're you're walking along and there's this dead horse on the side of the road and uh you click on the guy and he comments he's just like these uh what was it uh uh, uh these something are are too precise uh for anything else it must be uh, uh goblin raiders basically like like line for line doing the the, the line from star wars like you know mm. This targeting is too precise. It must be Imperial Stormtroopers. And, uh, and even the intro to the whole thing, he says, um, oh, and I'm, I'm going to screw it up. I want to look it up to see if I can find it. In fact, let me come back to it and, and, and say what he says. But he buries like seven different franchise names using them in the first sentence of the introduction just just randomly. And I'll see if I can find that for you. Chat room can find me a, a, a YouTube link to it. And it's on Steam. Uh, yeah, on Steam, only nine ninety nine. Good deal. Good deal. Excellent. Alex? 
Thanks, Tom. Um, Over to you, Alex, with weather. So it's not necessarily a video game per se, but it's electronic okay, well, that's and it's it got for controls. You. So oh, I was at the controls. You were at the per controls. Se. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, uh, operating the show doesn't count. Oh, um, well, okay, plan B. Uh, so last week, uh, Jerry Ellsworth was here visiting the cottage, and she, I guess, gifted us or loaned us or ah, something. Ah, the pinball um, game. A pinball machine, Ooh, yeah. which we have in the new studio. Very and nice. so uh, we, we all hooked it up um, that night and played a few rounds of nice. four-player pinball multiplayer. She said it was the, the lowest grossing machine on her pinball route in Portland. <laughs> so it she is, needed to find a home for it. It is Road Kings from 1986. Nice. Oh my gosh, I remember that one. That's awesome. And uh, it is chock full of 80s airbrush art. No, actually, that's an airbrush art, but it's 80s art goodness. Yeah. Whatever you would call that. So that's that's in the new studio. That is in the new studio I look to playing. next to the kitchen. You know what we'll have to do after we set up uh, the land stuff for the for the land parties? We'll have to build a MAME cabinet. I think that would be a great uh, project. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? We did that at Screensavers, I, and it, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, totally. I just want to play it, 720 because I think that's still the greatest arcade game of all time. Dude, what's funny, dude? I uh, uh, I totally was playing that on my MAME cabinet like uh, two days ago. No, did, did you have? I bought a PC controller specifically that could do the roll movement for 720. Wow. But I've yet to find something that was perfect though for replicating that because the controls yeah. of that were so spot on. No, yeah, yeah, and it's it's difficult. I have I have a trackball in the middle, uh, but it's difficult to to get because you want to spin it around, but it's not the same. You gotta you gotta go different directions all the way around. I got like a Gravis controller or something that can do the 360 spin. For specifically, I dropped like 40 bucks on it just for 720. Now, have you ever actually beat 720 before, Brian? Uh, no, 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 no. I never, and, and I want to get good at it. What's great about doing a meme cabinet is you get the chance to finally defeat all those quarter munchers. You know, you've yeah. gauntlet all the way to the With end. With 720, right, you have right. limited continues, though. So it's tough. But on yeah. Expert, I've been able to get pretty far into the game. Still, the, beating that game is like one of my life's goals. <laughs> it's I, it's I only taken I, me 20 some odd years. Uh, I am going to see if I have found the introduction to Magicka here. That, uh, oh, no, 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 this isn't it. Never mind. Wait, wait, maybe I did? No, never mind. I'll, I'll, yeah, hopefully chat room will find it here. There we go. They're saying from 12 seconds in right here. Oh, good. Here it is right here. Let me jump it forward. Check this out. This cracked me up. Stay a while and listen, and I will tell you a story. A story of dungeons and dragons, of orcs and goblins, of ghouls and ghosts, of kings and quests, but most importantly, of wizards and vampires. So, yeah, no, that's, uh, I just love it. It's been, all these buried references to, you know, King's Quest, Dungeons and Dragons, Orcs and Goblins, Go Goose and Ghouls, all the, uh, Ghosts and Ghouls. Um, it, it's just nonstop. The game never takes itself seriously. Really enjoyed it. Oh, cool. Definitely have to check it out. Let's move on to games coming out this week. I know that uh, Brian is actually very interested in the success or failure of Captain America Super Soldier. Uh, uh, only in so far as if people are in love with the movie, maybe they'll buy the game. I only need it to make $800 million, and then I win the movie draft. I'm so screwed. <laughs> it could happen, man. It could happen. Uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. Now, the early buzz I've heard about Captain America Super Soldier, the game, is that it's actually pretty good for a movie tie-in. So I've got I got a copy. I just have yet to fire it up. I'm going to be playing it over the weekend. Movie tie-ins are not the automatic failures that they used to be. Back in the 2D There's era, there's still a lot of really them that are bad, bad but yeah. they can occasionally it's gotten, be decent. You know, the Marvel ones have been okay by and large. I think, well, especially the Spider-Man ones, Activision has mm -hmm. done, and the X-Men games. I mean, X-Men Origins: Wolverine, the game was far superior to the movie, in my opinion. Call of War as the Cartel, Xbox 360 and PS3. Yes, uh, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be interesting. I, I like things that deal with sort of real life, real life issues that way. Got Makes a little, me think of Breaking Bad. Yeah, Breaking Bad, which starts Sunday. Now, how far are you along at watching the series? I am through season two. Oh, so I've just got to blaze through season three. Season not, three is fantastic. I'm not going to make make it through season three in time for the premiere, yeah. but I will be able to catch up in a couple. You know of weeks. what? I'll say this because my experience of Breaking Bad was watching the first season and then the next three episodes, like all in the span of two days don't worry about having a backlog of season four because the hardest thing to do with that show is going from marathon waiting. viewing to oh, waiting. Yeah, I'm sure. It's harder with that show than any other show in existence. And fingers crossed there'll be a Breaking Bad game at some point. 
out there. Uh, Vince Gilligan, if you're listening, license that to someone, preferably Rockstar. I think they do an awesome job with it. But wow. uh, yeah, Call of War is the cartel. I think uh, definitely looks promising as far as something that's a little ripped from the headlines in terms of uh, Mexican border drug violence. Um, also coming out is IL-2 Sturmovik Cliffs of Dover. That is a, f- I believe, a flight combat game there'll be nazis over the from ubisoft cliffs of dover. you know i enjoyed those flight combat games it's not one that i'm really deep on but i find that pick up and play spending a few hours i really enjoyed every uh, world war ii era flight combat game that i've ever played i think you can't go wrong with that it's interesting that it's a pc only title because i think more of that crowd is on the pc people that really you don't see as much world war ii stuff anymore on the consoles which i'm sorely disappointed by and smurfs really? Dan- oh sorry go ahead no i mean world war ii we got we, we had too much world war ii i'm glad that we're over never over enough two never enough world war ii it's never enough uh, world war you heard one. it here world war one <laughs> always gets overshadowed it does. World War One was the creepier war, too. When, yeah, I know. It's with the gas masks and gas the mustard and, gas. Yeah, yeah, dude. That was a messed up, you know, where they're taking people's faces off with shovels in the trenches. World War One's where it's at. Smurf's dance party is coming to the Wii. So kind of the way that Brian hopes Super Soldier does well. I'm hoping <laughs> Smurf's dance party because I've got that in our summer movie draft. Yay, Smurf's Dance Party. I think it will sell well, actually, because it's the Wii. It's a kid's title. And kids love the Smurfs. These, I don't know why, but like it's, it's that's such a, it's it's such such a, a huge seller though. on iOS. It's so, it's so, I mean, it's no, it's not the Snorks, which is lamer than the Smurfs. If something could be lamer than the Smurfs, it's the Snorks. But Smurfs are so lame, dude. Like, even as a kid, I remember thinking this They're is so lame. kind of smurfed out. We're not friends. Actually, yet. now with that, that meme can go on forever. It really can. It can. And also Smurfs for the DS. Yes. That's what's coming out this week. On to retro. Nintendo Famicom turned 28 retro. yesterday. Came out 71583 in Japan. For people that don't know, the Nintendo Famicom was the Japanese version of the Nintendo Entertainment System, which single handedly reinvigorated the video game industry in the United States in the mid to late 80s. So it was Famicom first, then became NES? Well, yes, the Famicom is what it's the NES. It's yeah, just yeah. what they called it. It's a, when, it, from when it was originally released, it was released as the Famicom. Yes, yeah. the Famicom. That makes me think of that I haven't thought of in a long time is how long ago were the days when Japan would get the awesome game systems first we had to sit around waiting for it to eventually come to the you united mean like the 3ds <laughs> uh yeah but even then that's still not quite the same i i mean i don't think because it used to be like i remember i would use i would buy the ps3 uh, you know video game magazines just to look at the graphics of the game and i'd be like oh those dang japanese they all they get everything those first. dang japanese first <laughs> Those darn Japanese. That was the movie I started in back in the early 80s. <laughs> With Brian Brushwood as Gaijin. Oh, no, it used to be a huge deal. I remember when the first CESs I went to, uh, EGM had a Super Famicom at their booth and that's how I made friends with all the guys at EGM just because I was hanging out there playing uh, Pilot Wings for, for the Super Famicom and still, I mean, and for people that don't know, the Famicom, uh, short for Family Computer. There, it makes sense, right? Should yes. Be able to, but yes, if you were suspecting that was the case, yes. It was the case. Yes, and we have a link to some uh, retro commercials and uh, Famicom footage. Now, the Famicom, though, had a lot of cool add-ons that were never released in the U.S., including the microphone. Uh, there were microphones in the controllers, and some of the games you could like scream into the microphone and uh, get a crazy bonus or power-up, which I thought was kind of neat. Are we going to roll those? Family oh, computer Tojo. That's such a 70s looking version of it. Awesome. Even though it's 80s, I know it's 80s. Mario doing other things besides Donkey Kong. I remember before I got into this business, the summer before I started covering video games professionally, uh, I was working at my mom's office in San Francisco every day, just, you know, as like an errand boy. And they were near Japantown. So I would go to Japantown and just sit there and think about spending my entire week's paycheck on Japanese games. Hell yeah. Because they had them in the stores there. And I remember buying like Fantasy Star 3 in Japanese. 
and then guessing my way through it sure, on the Genesis. Sure. But always with the Famicom games, I was always very impressed with just the breadth of titles that were released in Japan that never came out in the U.S. Well, yeah, and and think about the fact when you when you look at that co- commercial, yeah. that the Atari Twenty Six Hundred was still mm-hmm. preeminent in most people's minds as a game machine, and then you see these graphics, and you're like, holy, they look real. <laughs> I mean, relatively speaking, to the little blocks that you had, in which Atari. is so funny because I mean, you wonder now. And I think I think it's one of the things I'm going to get crap for in the future that I've said on this show repeatedly when people talk about new systems, that until we get 4K screens, I don't think you can go much higher with 1080p. But I wonder, you know, three years from now, four years from now, we're going to look back at the current stuff that's coming out and be, oh, man, that looks so so crappy. It's so jaggy. Yeah. Oh, ah, it doesn't look real at all. I mean, I notice a difference when I look at this stuff from five years ago or 10 years I, ago. Yeah. But in recent years, though, I, th- I think we were hitting a higher point of quality where it's it's subtler uh, evolutions. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, and what's funny is I would have disagreed with that sentiment uh, maybe two years ago. I would have claimed that, no, 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 we're hitting a plateau, we're leveling off. But then last year at E3, I remember looking at the Wii on these beautiful high-definition monitors, and the Wii graphics just looked like, I felt bad for Epic Mickey, because it was so chunky and blocky. I was like, wow. I felt bad for Epic Mickey on a variety of I wanted to love that game. That game was so hyped. I thought that was going to be the coolest thing, and then I was just bored with it about two hours in. All right, let's take a uh, quick break and thank our sponsor, Tech News Today. <laughs> that's what the, that's what the, uh, the <laughs> spreadsheet says. Wow. What is this? That's, that's really weird because uh, because I was convinced that our sponsor was Brian Brushwood's Twitter account, at Schwood. We actually have, have a commercial. Look at this. Okay, so if you want something to drive you away from watching our tech news show, there you go. <laughs> Somebody's going to tune in and be like, this sucks. There's no dancing on this you show. Should, you should have people submit their own dance videos. talking about the news. <laughs> I wanted to watch the dancing show. Let's move on to the Random Awesome of the Week. Do we have our intro for Random Awesome of the Week? Random Awesome of the Week. Random Awesome of the Week. Hurry up, Alex. It's Random Awesome of the Week. It's Random Awesome of the Week time. We've got to play Random Awesome of the Week intro. Oh, my God. Everybody's a winner. Thank you, Scott Fletcher. <laughs> Random Awesome of the Week, Medal of Honor Cat. I think we should just play the video, play a clip of it at least, and give people a taste. Medal of Honor Cat. Okay. I get it. Medal of Honor. And it has a cat. So what's it going to look like when it plays like a video? I bet it's going to have a cat. <laughs> Hence the name. Is cloud gaming. All oh, right. oh, that's the note. That's the note there that says there's pre-roll ads. Yeah. That's I preloaded what that, it, but it's not working. That's what that meant. Is that a guy from Heroes? No, that's Freddy W. Man, he's amazing. All of his videos are fantastic. And for people that want to check out the entire video on their own, I put a link up on my Twitter. At Glenn Rubenstone. That cat can take a shot. Look at that. Nicely done. Medal of Honor Call of Litter. <laughs> Check out the full link. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Glenn Rubenstein. Uh, it reminds me very much of uh, Toons' The Driving Cat. And someone in the chat room says it reminds him of the SNL movies, uh, The Laser Cats. No actual cats were harmed in it's the making good. of that It's good video. that they clarify that. Yeah. 
Well, that's it for uh, uh, the uh, stories. We, do we have any feedback before we uh, I think we got to most of our here? feedback okay. during the interview there. We Excellent. got some great questions. Thanks, everyone, for sending those in. Um, oh, you know what was interesting? Uh, someone did... Uh, Will Swirly Swirlhain, I if that is indeed your real name, oh, it must be. Uh, had some feedback to episode 10, our last uh, beta episode, about how we're talking about keyboard mouse results. And it kind of speaks to what Brian was talking about earlier with his meme cabinet. Will was saying, what about trackballs? Do, mm. pe- do people still use the trackball? I never liked the trackball personally, but I knew people who swore by them. It, it is a minority. Yeah. And it seems with gaming, I, I think in the arcade was where the trackball was implemented the best. Brian, do you stroke the ball? Uh, you know, I do to navigate to my games on uh, my main cabinet. Uh, but uh, you know what? I feel like in many ways the the current trackpad phenomenon that's blowing up, you know, with the magic mouse and all that whatnot, to me, it just all feels like trackballs to me. Yeah, kind of. But with Marble Madness, the trackball, like that was fantastic back in the day. Yeah. Some yeah. games worked really Dude, well with that. the moment you said Marble Madness, I instantly had the theme song in my head. Do, 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 do. Oh, man, I'm going to have to look that up now. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, Sorry. If you have any feedback, if you have any questions, comments, or just want to talk at us about what you think about the show, oh, send those God. to twitgameshow at gmail.com. As we mentioned earlier, we will be off next week. But when we return in two weeks, we'll be in the new Twit Brick House, which if you haven't got your brick yet, what are you waiting for? I, I yeah. ordered mine. Hate America. <laughs> might, yeah, might, you you know, bricks.twit.tv is the place to go to prove you love America. That's right. If you don't go to bricks.twit.tv, it doesn't mean you hate America, but it leaves but it, it in it, doubt. You're on the list. You're on my list. If you don't have a brick, in fact... Get yourself a replica of your brick. You keep it on you at all times. If you get a replica yeah. of your brick, you, especially ID. when you're in Arizona, you can commit the gutsiest vandalism ever. Because, you know, if you want to throw a brick through a window, why not throw one with your name that's, engraved That's on why it? my brick says Brian Brushwood. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yes, absolutely. Can I, can I play the Brian Marvel says music, Tom the Manus music on our way out? Yes, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, we got our outro music. So, until next time, two weeks from now, when we join you once again, this is Glenn Rubenstein on behalf of myself, Tom Merritt, Brian Brushwood, Alex Gumpel, our producer Tony Wang, reminding you that time enjoyed is never time wasted, especially when you're at the controls. See y'all in two weeks. See if I could do the robot, that would be... Yeah, I know. Appropriate. You can't do that. Yeah. Tony can't. Brian is a robot.